I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're going to dye some yarn with the Wilton Colorite Performance Color System. This is probably my favorite liquid food coloring to use for dyeing yarn. It's very pigmented, and the set comes with only eight colors. Now, I have looked at a lot of different combinations of these colors. We have color mixing videos with them, but I don't think I've ever used all of them in one project, at least mixed together. And so that's what we're gonna try today. Yes, you can dye yarn with food coloring. You just need to make sure that you pick the right types of food coloring and the right types of yarn. The Wilton's Colorite Color Performance System that we're using today has five artificial food coloring pigments that are approved in the US. Red 3, Red 40, Blue 1, Yellow 5, and Yellow 6. Uh, there are some other approved food coloring pigments that I know work, but if you are, have like a natural food coloring, the results won't be the same as what we have today. When it comes to yarn, you need a yarn with a protein fiber like wool. If you're trying to dye a synthetic like acrylic or polyester or a plant-based fiber like cotton, you won't be able to dye your yarn with food coloring. The last two things that you need to dye yarn with food coloring are heat and acid. We are gonna be adding vinegar to our dye baths today uh, so that way there's enough acid for the colors to strike to the yarn. And then we'll need heat. And there's many sources. You can have a kettle on a stovetop. You can microwave something. Uh, today, I'm gonna to set this up as a cold process. Put the yarn outside to uh, let the color slowly absorb to the yarn, but then I will steam set it in a couple of days. But there are a lot of options, and if you wanna see more, I have many, many tutorials here on dyeing yarn with food coloring and things like Kool-Aid, which already have the citric acid mixed in. So make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. A lot of the dyes that I use these days are commercial acid dyes, but since this artificial food coloring works in the same kind of way, a lot of those techniques I do with acid dyes, you can also do with food coloring. Commercial dyes have better light fastness and wash fast properties, but I have items that I dyed with food coloring over a decade ago that are still super vibrant. So it can last if you treat for your objects carefully. For example, don't leave it in direct sunlight for long periods of time. Today, we are gonna dye 200 grams of Nipix Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn that is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And I just removed these from a pre-soak. There's still a lot of water in them, but I pre-soaked them for about an hour. In these plastic shoe boxes, I have eight cups of water. And we're gonna mix these colors in two kind of different ways. In one of them, when we add the colors, we're gonna have the yarn in here already. And then in the other, we're gonna add the dye, then stir it up to mix it all together, and then we will add the yarn after. We need acid for the food coloring to bind to yarn, but I do not like having acid in with the food coloring before the yarn is present. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of white vinegar to this pot now, and we'll add acid to the other pot right before we add the yarn. The main reason why I'm wearing gloves right now is because uh, food coloring can stain your hands and I don't wanna stain my hands today. So we're gonna start with two drops of the red color. The base red color is a mixture, I think, of the two different red pigments and then also there may be some yellow in there as well, I'm not sure. Next up is Crimson, which is just Red 40. The red pigments strike really, really quickly to yarn, but the one that strikes the fastest is this base pink, which is Red number three. Oh, was that two drops? Mm, I'll do one. Okay, they're kind of doing double, like a, ah, I fudged it. I, yeah, they, it was doing kind of like a double drop kind of thing. It'll be fine. We'll see differences here, I promise. Next up is the base orange, which is yellow number six. I always mix up this and the yellow yellow. And the base yellow is just yellow number five. 
And so what's nice here is that we have a lot of pigments in this set that are a single color, which also helps with mixing. And the Colorite website has a good mixing guide. Blue, base blue, is just blue number one. And I have a feeling our color is gonna be fairly red because a lot of the colors we're adding are very, very red leaning. Base brown is a mixture potentially of all five pigments. It is a little bit more of a yellow leaning brown, but if you use it on its own, it will break, which means that we'll see the colors and pigments separate into some of the like reds and blues and yellows. And then finally, we have the base black. Oop, I accidentally did three drops, so I'm gonna do three here. Uh, the base black is very blue leaning as well. It's really hard to achieve a true black with food coloring. But now, we are gonna stir this up. Ooh, ooh, wow, this is looking a bit browner than I expected. It's hard because I'm seeing like the sh reflection from over here. Huh, I was not expecting it to be brownish. I thought that those reds would really overwhelm, but you know what? The black might be pigmented enough that we have a nice kind of brownish color but it will probably break. And so now we're gonna add a tablespoon of white vinegar to this. I'm gonna squeeze out the extra water from our yarn. Ooh, ooh, this is a nicer brown than the base brown. It is very reddish, which I like. Uh, the final color might be fairly pink, but if you may notice, there is a shift in what we're seeing in the color now, because since we're cold and we just had one tablespoon of white vinegar, not more, what we have left is a little bit greenish. And that's because, as I mentioned, those reds are striking to the yarn so much faster than the other pigments that we have. But now, it's time for our moment of truth. Because over here, we have mixed things before adding the yarn. And over here, we're gonna mix now. So I am going to, wow! Oh, that is so cool looking. That is super, super cool looking. Okay, I am pressing it and moving it a tiny bit, but I'm not gonna stir it, I think, to the, oh, I should have let it wait for about 10 minutes. I think I'm gonna let it wait for 10 minutes before stirring it a little bit more, or honestly, I may just leave it as is. Now comes the point of the video where I start to have an endless debate with myself over, do I stir more or do I not stir more? Part of me loves what we have there, and so therefore I don't wanna stir. I wanna leave it, see how the colors spread with time. They may spread a fair amount, or they may stay similar to what we see in the pan right now. The other side of me, the like science side, was like, well, I stirred the other one a lot. Shouldn't we stir the one where we had the yarn in first a lot as well? Because that would be a better comparison. But you know, I'm still leaning on no stir. It's still a, hey, the order in which you apply the dyes and the color does matter. But now I'm gonna pose another question, which could be another video. What would happen if we added the drops of dyes, which you can see are fairly thick and a lot of them just sort of stayed on the bottom. That's because these dyes are so pigmented. We had a total of 16, maybe 17 or 18 drops of food coloring total here and there's a lot of pigment on the yarn. So what if we dropped that color in and didn't start and then added the yarn, let it sit and then stirred? That would be a fun way to do it as well. I mean, we could do like a three set 
and then do a, re a repeat of this kind of experiment. So if that's something that you would like to see, please leave a comment below. Uh, yeah. But now the timer has just gone off and so we are gonna get ready to set this yarn outside so the colors can slowly strike. I love how fall this is feeling right here. Before we set it outside, I'm gonna go ahead and add two more tablespoons of white vinegar to each of these containers. And the reason why I'm doing that is so we have plenty of acid for things to strike. At the one tablespoon, a lot of the colors would strike to the superwash yarn, but uh, it doesn't hurt to have more acid, especially when you have the yarn and the dye in there together. That base pink will start to crash out of solution and you'll get sort of some solid particles floating if you have the acid in there too soon. But anyway, I'm gonna go set these outside in the sun for a couple of days. It's been a couple of days and the yarn is back inside and we can see if things have changed at all. Now when we mixed all of the colors together all at once, ooh, we do have color breaking here. In addition to like the pinks, there are some bluer sections in there and some like more greenish brown sections too. Um, that is really cute. Now in this one, we added, oh, the colors on and then moved it after. And look at all the different hues we have. We could have stirred it more, but it's looking pretty similar to how it did when we put it outside. So now I am gonna put all of this yarn into my steamer basket. So now the yarn is in my steamer basket. And so I'm gonna go steam set the yarn for 30 minutes, let it cool completely, and then we will wash it. Let's wash our yarn. And to the rinse water, I'm gonna add a little bit of some clear dish soap. And we're gonna just move that soap around and hopefully we won't see any color bleeding. Uh, if you do have some color that comes out in the water and I'm not seeing any here at all, uh, there are things you can do uh, to help mitigate that, including uh, maybe even immersion, maybe even putting the yarn and some vinegar inside a pot and boiling that. Uh, but the reason why I do cool that or solar dyeing, I like to steam set the yarn afterwards, is because then we have nice clear rinse baths like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish washing out all of the soap. Then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang, hang it up to dry so we can have some conclusions. Even when our dye bath is cold, it's at room temperature, you can start to see some dye striking onto the yarn. All you need is a little bit of acid there. However, to properly set the yarn, you do want to have a little bit more heat. That's why I steam set the yarn for 30 minutes, even though outside when maybe it was 70s to 80s, mid 80s outside, being outside for a couple days, all the color had absorbed. I just found I like having that steam setting stage in there. But can you tell which one I mixed up the dye and which one I just added the dye onto the yarn and then mixed it up? Uh, it's pretty clear how much the color struck here right away. Now, as I mentioned, we do have color breaking in this skein. I see some gr bluish grays, the pinks, and some hints of green. Now, color breaking is when you have a mixture of multiple different pigments, but they bind to your yarn at different rates. And so you're seeing that single mixture of color separate or break into different colors. And the reds strike the fastest of artificial food coloring. Next come the yellows and then last the blue. And so if you have mixtures of colors, oftentimes you will get some amount of breaking. And this is something that can be really, really fun to take advantage of. But if you want to avoid breaking as much as possible, I would delay adding the acid as long as possible because here, even cold, we have a tremendous amount of breaking, but it gives us a fun tonal yarn. The Wilton Colorite color performance system is actually my favorite type of food coloring to use for dyeing yarn, at least liquid food coloring. I love Kool-Aid packets. They're so fun. You can speckle with them, but that's sort of in a different category because that has the acid in there already that you can use to dye the yarn. But compared to other brands like McCormick's and Americolor, 
I really, really like the Colorite because I find them to be really easy to work with. And I like that there's a limited color palette, but there are a lot of different recipes on how to mix these colors together to make other colors. And so, uh, yeah, a lot of the icing color ratios that Wilton recommends on their website work pretty well on yarn as well. I had a few different goals when it came to filming this video. I wanted to see a bit what the average color might be like if I mix all these colors together, which isn't perfect. There was a little too much black, maybe a little too much base pink, but it gives giving us that general direction. But I also wanted to give an example on how the order in which you add color does matter for the way your final yarn looks. Uh, in both of these, we added the colors in a spatial way in the container, and then we mixed up the dye. But in one case, the yarn was already present, and in the other, the yarn was added after we had already mixed up the dye. And that gives us a pretty dramatic difference that you can see here. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please subscribe so you can watch me play around more with both food coloring and commercial dyes, exploring different techniques and ways to create the colors that you want for whatever yarn crafts you enjoy. I post new videos at least twice a week on Tuesday and Friday mornings, plus we also have frequent live streams and other kinds of videos throughout the month, and you don't wanna miss any of it. Food coloring is how I started my own yarn dyeing journey, and so it'll always have a soft spot in my heart, even as I do more and more with commercial acid dyes. And so if you're interested in seeing if yarn dyeing is a hobby that is right for you, I recommend food coloring as a way to play around with it a little bit to see if you enjoy the process before you go and invest in a lot of dedicated dye equipment and colors. But anyway, thank you so much for watching.